admitting to this festival that was that was uh, that went and listened to Ron speak earlier today that want to honor uh, the man Congressman Ron Paul, who is great, a great American. But I think you know more than honoring the man himself. I'm sure Ron would be the first one to say that what he really hopes you honor are the principles that that he's been fighting for, the principles that are embodied in this freedom movement that he's helped lead. And I know he's stepping down from Congress, but that doesn't mean that the fight is over. And I, I am very comfortable or comforted in the fact that his son Rand is in the U.S. Senate. And I know there are a lot of people who were part of the Ron Paul movement, Liberty movement, who were upset at Rand. Uh, they thought, oh, well, you know, he sold out, he endorsed Mitt Romney. Believe me, it wasn't an enthusiastic endorsement. He kind of did what he had to do. He is a U.S. Senator. He is a member of the Republican Party. And he made a lot of promises to get elected. And we're glad that he's there. And the fact that he had to, you know, settle for the lesser of the two evils, it's a small price to pay to gain some influence within that party. Because we're going to need a lot of influence in the Republican Party. Because you're correct, there's not much difference between Romney and Obama. And of course, I'm not a senator. I don't have any campaign promises to keep, so I can endorse Gary Johnson. I mean, he's he's the closest thing running to Ron or Rand. And look, I know who Ron and Rand endorsed, but who knows who he's going to pull the lever for when he, or not really levers anymore, but when he goes into the voting booth. If he votes his conscience, he'll probably vote for Gary Johnson as well. But. The key, I think, to this movement, and probably a reason uh, to prefer uh, Mitt Romney over Barack Obama, and again, it is the lesser of two evils, but you know, if we're going to have two evils, we might as well go with the lesser. But the reason is uh, we're going to have a collapse. We're going to have an economic collapse. In fact, that's the subject of my book that's right over there. But we're ha this crash is coming, and it's probably going to come within the term of whoever wins this next election. And I think it's important that at least we have somebody who has an open mind to the free to capitalism, to liberty. I think Barack Obama doesn't believe in any of the principles upon which this nation was founded, doesn't even understand those principles. And in fact, I think he is very skeptical of capitalism. And he is looking to capitalize on any economic failures that he can somehow blame capitalism for. And so whenever something goes wrong, Barack Obama is going to look at that as vindication of, of his ideas and his belief that the only reason that socialism hasn't worked is because the wrong people haven't tried it. And he believes that he knows enough that it'll work if only given a chance. And so if we have this economic crash and Obama is the president, then you know what's going to happen. And we can't afford, the nation can't survive another round of government stimulus because it'll be lethal. It'll be toxic. At least if we've got Romney in office when it hits the fan. And if you've got people like Rand Paul and a few other good people who are being elected, a lot, you know, thanks in large part to the help of a lot of people in the Liberty Movement, in the Ron Paul Movement. I know the media doesn't like to give us enough credit. They like to blame, you know, they, they like to credit other factors. There's some good candidates now in the Republican Party, both for the Senate race and House seats, that probably wouldn't have got the nominations without the hard work of a lot of people in the Ron Paul Movement. But. It's, it's important because if, if Romney is president, he will at least have an open mind. I mean, I think he believes in capitalism. He might not understand it, but he probably believes in it. 
And I think that given the right circumstances, with enough at stake, that he could be persuaded to do the right thing. As I said, I think Obama is a lost cause, but I think there is some hope uh, that we can make some headway uh, with, with Romney. But I think what's very important that we have to do as a movement is to get people to understand that electing Romney, assuming that Romney gets elected, there are a lot of Republicans who think all we have to do is elect Romney, cut taxes, and everything is going to be great. It's not going to be great. We're going to have a disaster even if we elect Romney. The only difference is if we elect Romney, we maybe have a chance of getting out of it, and that's only if he abandons the policies he's advocating now and listens to reason. Because Romney, you know, as much as he wants to talk now about limited government, he wants to talk about making government smaller, he doesn't really want to make it smaller. He wants to expand, he doesn't want to cut anything out of the entitlements, he wants to spend more on Social Security, he wants to spend more on Medicare, he wants to spend more on national defense, he wants to grow the budget. In fact, what makes me so upset when I hear a lot of the Republican arguing against the Democrats now, it's come down to the Republicans are now attacking the Democrats because they say that Democrats want to cut Medicare. I mean, we've lost the ideological battle when we're attacking the left because they want to reduce the size of one of the biggest government programs out there, even though they don't really want to do that. There are no real Republicans coming out there and saying that they want to reduce these programs. They don't want to, they don't want to tell the truth because they, they don't want to risk not getting elected. Everybody wants to buy the votes of the people who are living off of the government. And you have that, that, um, that, that problem within the Republican Party. There are a lot of Republicans. I'm going to be at that convention 